Div tag is one of the important tags in HTML. Before we see how it works, let's know its importance. It works at block level. It is used to group more than one HTML tags like images, videos, headings, paragraphs, links, etc. The advantage of grouping them is that it's very easy to give a common CSS property to entire block. More importantly, we can place that block wherever we want in the entire web page. Let's see a small example where we have three different sections in a web page. This is section 1, this is section 2 and this is section 3. And each section there is a paragraph and there is a heading. Let's imagine these are the CSS properties that we need to set for the section 1. The text color should be red color and font style is Times New Roman. And for section 2 we have different styles. And for section 3 again we have different styles. In case if we want to write CSS without using div tag then we need to use six styles separately for each of the elements mentioned here. For three h1s we need to set different properties and for three paragraphs we need to set different properties. In case if we use div sections so that these two can be kept in a separate div tag, these two can be kept in a separate div tag and in the third div tag we can keep these two separately so that we can use only three styles. The main purpose of div tag is to design a web page layout. Here is an example that I am going to demonstrate. Look at this page. We have a title section, we have a left menu, we have center main body, we have right menu and we have a bottom section. Most of the web pages will look like this. To design a web page with different different layouts, div tags are used. And of course, these kind of web pages can also be designed using table with row span and column span. But whenever we are having too many number of layouts in the web page, using tables are not a good idea because maintenance is very hard. So to design a web page, the most widely used tag is div. There is no other option. To make you understand clearly, how div tag is used to design a web page. I'll recreate this entire page in step wise. In step one, I'll create a title and logo section. And in the step two, I'll be creating left menu. And in the step three, I'll be creating the center body. And in step four, I'll be creating these two internal boxes. In step five, I'll be creating right menu. And in the last step, I'll be creating a bottom menu. After completion of step six, the page looks like this. Let's start. This is step one. In step 1, I have created only title and logo section using div tag. You can observe clearly one thing. The title and logo section has taken the 100% width, but the height you can set. These two properties width and height can be set by you as in the way you want. Since it is title and logo section, I want width to be 100%. Now let's see the code. In step 1, we have only one div element. Inside div element, I have taken one single HTML element h1. In fact, you can take any number of elements inside, but to demonstrate example as simple as possible, I am taking only one single HTML element in each div. Here are the properties for this div tag. The class name is title and logo. The definition for title and logo is here. Let's look at the properties that are used. I used a border with two pixels and the border line appears in black. I have set a different background color and text is aligned in the center. Height you can see that I have given only 70 pixels because it's a title and logo section. Width is 100%. So simple. In step 2, I am going to create a left menu. In step 1, we have already created title and logo section. In step 2, we are going to create a left menu. Before I show you the code for left menu, let me tell you one thing. After left menu, I am going to create a center body. The center body should appear here exactly in the second row. Let me imagine this is first row and this is second row. In the second row, here the center body should appear. But by the default, whenever we create a new div tag, it means that after left menu, if I create a center block, then it appears here. You can see that it is appeared in the second row. Whenever I create a new div tag, by default, it appears as the third row. But I don't want my center body to appear here as a third row. It should appear very adjacent to left menu here. To tell that, while creation of left menu itself, you need to change the order. That means the default top down should be changed to left to right. Meaning that after left menu, if I am creating any new div tag, then that will appear in the center portion. So here exactly. Now let's see the code for left menu. Title and logo section is already done. Now let's see how the left menu is going to be created. To create a left menu, I have used a separate div tag where inside this div tag, I have taken two elements 
H1 and H2. By this time, I have increased one more element, H2. The name of the class is left menu. Now let's see the properties of left menu. In the left menu, these are the properties that are set. Borderline, black, background color, text is aligned at the center. And what exactly for the left menu, how much the height and width is required, you can define. And I, we need a margin. In case if you need a margin, then you can set it. It's not a compulsory parameter. The most important parameter is overflow. We need to set it to auto. Basically, in a left menu layout, we try to keep so much text that are related to the website, like links, news that are related or any announcements. As in the way you want, you can, you'll be keeping some items in the left menu. You can observe the height of the left menu is 480 pixel. If total number of items that you are going to add in left menu increases, then overflow happens. To overcome this problem, we need to set overflow as auto. By default, it is not automatic. You need to set it as automatic manually. By doing so, what happens? Even though the total number of items in the left menu gets increased, you'll get a scroll bar. Using that scroll bar, you can move up and down to look at the items. I've set this top property to 40 pixel because I need some gap between the title bar and the left menu. Float should be left. This point is already demonstrated. In case if you don't set float to left, the center body that I'm going to create in the next step will appear in the bottom of the left panel. But I want the center body to appear very adjacent to the left bar in the same row. To do that, we need to set float as left. The default value for float is top. We need to change that property. This is step three. In step one, we have created title and logo section. In step two, we have created left menu. In step three, we are going to create the center body. Let's look at the code. This is the code for center body. A separate div tag is created and inside div tag I have created only one HTML element, heading one, and the name of the class is given as center main body. And here are the CSS properties for center main body. Same properties, borderline black, a different background color, text element center, Height and width, I have set according to how much the center body that you want, you can set the height and width. As usually, I have taken a margin of 5 pixel and I set overflow as auto. In case the total number of items that I am going to keep in the center body gets increased, then automatically I will get a scroll bar through which I can travel up and down, left and right as well. And you need to set float as left because it has to appear left to its relative element. That's it. This is step 4. In step one, we have created title and logo. In step two, we have created left menu. In step three, we have created the entire center body. As part of step four, inside this center body, I have created separately two different tags. This is box one and this is box two. It's so easy to create any sub element inside a div element. Basically, inside center div tag, I'll be writing two different div tags saying that one is box one and other is box two. Let's look at the code. Here is the code for center main body with sub elements box one and box two. Inside this main view, I have created two divs. This is div one and this is div two. And here is the place where I close the main view. In div one, I said it has inside center one. And in div two, I said inside center two, for which I'll be showing you the properties. What are the different properties and colors that I have used. And I've taken only one heading such that inside the first sub element, the center box one will be displayed. The text of this inside center box one will be displayed. In the same way, I have taken a heading for second box as well. Now let's see the properties of inside center one and inside center two. This is inside center one. The same border I have taken, a different background color, text element as usually center. And I've set a height and width. How much exactly the height and width that is required inside the center body for that particular box one, you can take. As in the way you want, you can take. And I've set a margin. Here, the margin is slightly bigger when compared to the other elements because it has to appear like a sub-element. And I've set a left margin. This margin 20 pixel appear all around that box. Left, right, bottom, top. But especially if you want anything to be increased, then you can say margin left. So in my case, I have taken margin left as 80 pixel, such that the element looks slightly left part of that particular center body. If you want any gap more, 
towards left side, bottom, right, you can set that property. In my case, I have set this property as margin left. The left to margin I have given as 80 pixel. This time, the float cannot be left because it's an internal element that is going to be appear inside the center body. The float should be top. The same code of center 1 is copied for center 2. There is There are no changes because you can see that the box sizes are same, background colors are same and uh, they appear as it is. That's it. This is step 5 where we are creating the right menu. Step 1, title and logo finished. Step 2, left menu is finished. Step 3, we have created the main body, the center body. And in the step 4, we have created center box 1 and center box 2. As part of step 5, we are going to see how this right menu can be created. To create this right menu, make sure that float is already left. Let's look at the code now. This is the div tag that is used to create a right menu. Inside this, I have created two HTML elements, h1 and h2, so as to display it as right menu. Let's look at the properties now. The name of the class is given as right menu. Inside right menu, these are the properties that I have taken into the account. All are routinely used properties, background color, border, margin, and overflow is auto, and float is left. Top is set to be 10 pixel. So simple, that's it. This is the last step. In the last step, we are going to create the bottom section. Step one, title is done. Step 2, left is done, center body is done, right menu is done and in the last step we are going to create the bottom menu. To create a bottom menu, a separate div is created like this. Inside I have written only h1 and here is the properties for bottom section. The same properties, border lines, background colors, text, height, width, float and make sure your width is 100% just like your title. You can create the bottom with the 100% and mo most of the web pages, the bottom section will be 100%. You can set the height as in the way you want. That's it. We are done. In case if you have any doubts, please make a comment.